the X3 comes out of the box loaded with demo sequences, we'll have to erase the sequencer memory to make room for new sequences. Press the sequencer button, and then function button 8, the song select page. You'll see a blinking capital S, which stands for song with a number next to it. If the current song number showing is not 0, type 0 and the enter key to select song 0, T42. Then press function button 1. Notice at the bottom of the display that it says 1% free. This means that there is only 1% of the sequencer memory available for sequencing, since the rest of it is tied up in the demo sequences. To bring the memory up to 100% free, we'll have to erase any songs and patterns that are in memory. To do this, press the edit button to let us enter the sequencer edit mode. To cycle through the sequencer edit pages, we can use the function and cursor buttons. Press function button 2 and cursor up to 2G erase song. At the bottom left of the display is song 0 with a blinking OK. Press the Yes button, and the display will read completed. Now press the Sequencer button, the Song Select Function button, and change the song number to 1. Back to Song Edit Mode, and the Song Erase page. Remember our page memory feature we turned on earlier? It just saved us several button pushes. Press Yes for OK and repeat the procedure for all songs. Now let's erase all the sequence patterns. In song edit mode, press function button number 6 to access the erase pattern page. Starting with pattern number 0, cursor to the right and press yes for OK. The word completed will appear. Cursor left and use the yes button to increase the pattern number by 1. Highlight OK and say yes again. The demo sequences use 85 patterns, which all need to be erased. Rather than repeat this procedure 85 times, there's a shortcut that you can use to erase the entire sequencer memory. This will initialize the X3 so that there are no programs, combis, or sequencer data. But don't cry, since I'll show you how to get your programs and combis back. Turn off. And while depressing the cursor down and enter button, turn the X3 back on. At this point, you'll have no programs or combinations, so you'll have to insert the factory disk. Press the disk button, cursor up to page 1B, and say yes to OK to see the disk directory. You want to load only programs, combinations, and global data from the file named x3p load. Highlight OK and say yes twice. Here's a hot tip so you won't have to go through this procedure ever again. Let's save our empty sequencer as a template file that can be loaded anytime we want to empty the sequencer memory. Insert your new disk and press the disk button. Press function button 3 and cursor up to 3C. Name this file empty sequence. Cursor over to the OK and press the Yes button. Say yes to are you sure. Whenever you need to clear the sequencer memory, simply load this file from page 1C, the load song page. Now let's get set up to record by pressing the sequencer button. We'll need a metronome to listen to, so press function button 6. You have three choices, off, on all the time, and on only while recording. I prefer the third choice. By the way, notice when I turn on the metronome, its icon appeared in the display. I'd like a two-measure lead-in, so press the Edit button, then Function 8, and cursor up to 8D. I stands for Intro Count. It's already set to two measures, so I'll leave it alone. 
The next parameter is for level. The level of the metronome is a little too loud, so I'll set it to 50 and press Enter. The next parameter is for assigning the metronome sound to bus inputs A, B, C, or D. I'll leave it at A and B. Now I'm going to show you how to easily and quickly get a decent effect setting for your sequence. The feature is called Copy Effects, and it's found in the Sequence Edit Mode on page 7F. Drum programs typically have a good generic effect setting, and this is true of Program A09 Total Kit. The display should be set to Program A09 and respond to the OK with a Yes. Are you sure? Of course you're sure. Your song now has the same effect settings as program A09. Now press the sequencer button, and then press function button 4 to set the tempo to 120. It's already showing 120, so I'll leave it alone. Notice the word MAN, which stands for Manual Tempo Control. The X3 has a 17th track for tempo and meter changes. When you've entered tempo changes onto the tempo track, the tempo control parameter should be changed from manual to auto. Now to assign a program sound to track 1. Press function button 2, cursor right to the program parameter, and choose bank A, program 53, electric tap. By the way, to change banks on a track, use the tens hold minus key on the keypad like this. Now it's time to record something. To start recording, press the Record Write button to hear the metronome. When you're ready to record, press the Start Stop button, and after a two-measure count, the X3 will start recording. Here we go. To stop recording, press the stop button and the sequencer resets to measure one. Press the start stop button to play back the track. You know, the timing on this keyboard track is a little sloppy. I'd like to straighten it out a little bit by quantizing it. Quantize means error correcting for time. Press the edit button and then press function button three. We want to quantize track one from measure one to measure eight. Since I didn't play anything busier than eighth notes, I'll adjust the note value parameter to display an eighth note. After quantizing to eighth notes, every note in my performance will be shifted to the nearest eighth note. Cursor right and notice the blinking all. This means that all data on the track would get quantized. My other options would be to quantize only the notes, controller data, aftertouch data, pitch bends, or program changes. I'll choose all. A quick note, choosing only notes would be a good idea if the track had a lot of pitch bend data that you didn't want to disturb. The next parameter is offset, which deals with advancing or delaying the timing of the data. I'll leave it alone and move on to a wonderful feature called soft quantize. With soft quantizing, I can choose to have the timing of my performance corrected by a percentage so as to retain a little bit of my human feel. I'll choose 90% and say yes to OK. Let's listen to the result. tighter, but not too much. Now let's reset the sequencer, exit the edit mode, and go to function button 2 to set the track number from 1 to 2. This will be a drum track, so I'll assign program A09 and set the level to 110. By the way, here's a tip to help you get better stereo imaging for your combinations and sequence tracks. 
All the drum kits and many programs have been programmed to have a special stereo image. To take advantage of this, set the panning parameter for any track to PRG. I always recommend using it for drums. It's also possible to quantize your performance as it's being played in by using the real-time quantize feature. We'll use it to record our drum track. Function button 5 and set it to eighth notes. Now would be an excellent time to show you the different recording modes. Go to function page 7, the record mode page. It's currently blinking OVWR for overwrite. This is the default setting. You record something and it replaces whatever was previously there. Let's change it to overdub. Here you can record more data onto a track without erasing what's already present. Next is auto punch. You can choose a measure to start recording and a measure to stop recording. This is useful when you want to record over a section of music without erasing the entire track. Next is manual punch in and out. You can use a foot switch or the record write button to enter and exit recording mode while the sequencer is playing. The last option is loop record mode. This works just like a drum machine with a selected number of measures that continually repeat. You can add to it each time it comes around. I'll set it to loop from measure one through measure eight. I'll start out by playing the hi-hat part, then I'll add kick and snare when it comes around again, and for a little soul, I'll put in the tambourine part. I'll press page two, and press the record write button and the start stop button to begin recording. That'll work. Now I could go on and record other parts onto other tracks, but to save time, I have enough data in the sequencer now to show you a few more features. Let's say that we'd like to extend this eight bar section to 16 bars. What we'll do is copy these eight measures and paste them starting at measure nine. Go to edit mode and function button four. Cursor up to 4C, the copy measure page, and set the track number parameter to all instead of just one track. Move over and set the start measure to one and the ending measure to eight. Cursor right and set the destination track numbers to all. They're already there. Cursor right again and set the measure number to nine. What we're actually doing is copying all the tracks from measure one to eight and placing them at the beginning of measure nine. Cursor to the OK and press the yes button. It's done. Now press the sequencer mode button, then functions button seven to change the record mode from loop to overwrite. Now let's play the sequence. have a 16 bar sequence. Let's talk about pattern recording. The X3 sequencer also has a pattern mode that lets you work with up to 99 patterns. A pattern can be anywhere from 1 to 99 measures long. Here's how to record a drum pattern. First, select track 2 where we recorded our drums. Now, enter edit mode, press function button 5, and cursor up to 5D to set our pattern parameters. Pattern 0, 0, 4, 4, that's all right, and a length of two measures, cursor right, beat resolution is high, 
which means 96 pulses per quarter note. Now say OK. Back to 5A to real-time pattern record. Here's our pattern number. A tempo of 120 is fine, although I could play it in at any tempo and play it back at any other. MM stands for metronome. Set it to record for only during recording. It's already there. Cursor right and set the real-time quantize to 16th notes. We're ready to go. Back to 5A. Press record and start stop to begin our repeating pattern. I could now copy this pattern into the drum track anywhere. Press the edit button and select page 4F, copy to track. The display reads copy pattern 00 to track 2. Now cursor right and set the destination measure number to 5. Highlight OK and press the yes button twice to copy it from measures 5 through 8. Now press the sequence button and the start stop button to hear what we just did. Patterns are a handy way to put little sections of music together. Another thing people want to know about immediately when learning a sequencer is event editing. Here's how it works. Press the sequencer button, the edit button, and then press function button 2. Select track 2, the drum track, cursor right, and use the numeric keypad to select the desired measure location by typing in number 1 and enter. Cursor up to page 2B. Now press the record right button and then the start stop button to enter event edit mode. Here we can see that the first event in the measure has an index number of triple zero. It shows a meter of 44. Cursor to the index number and use the up value button to move to the next event. Hear that? That was the sound of the first event. You can hear each sound as you move through the event list. The first event is played exactly on beat one clock zero, 00 out of 96 clocks per quarter note. The MIDI note number is C2, which is a bass drum. I played it with a velocity value of 92 and held the key down for 12 pulses out of 96. I could change the note number and sound by highlighting it and using the value buttons. Here's another hot tip. When a note is highlighted, you can hold down the enter key and play any note on the keyboard to quickly assign it to this event position. This is a most excellent way to correct mistakes. Now press the start stop button to leave event edit. Let's talk about the 17th track. The X3 sequencer has a dedicated track that's used solely for tempo and meter changes. Here's where it shows up. Press the edit button. Function button 2, cursor up to event edit. With the track number highlighted, push the value entry slider all the way up. After track 16 is the word temp for tempo track. Press record right and start stop to enter the event edit mode for the tempo track. For instance, if you wanted to insert a tempo change at measure 12, you'd select measure 13 in the display and press enter. Cursor right to the index number and press function button 7. Your newly inserted tempo event will appear with an index number of 001 at measure 12 and beat 1. I'll highlight it and select 240 beats per minute. 
You can also change the beat and clock value to your preference. We now have to set the X3 sequencer to respond to this tempo change. Press the Start Stop button to leave Event Edit mode, and press the Sequencer button, and then Function button 4. Change Manual to Auto, and press Function button 1. I'll start the sequence playing at measure 10, so that you can see and hear the result. That's all there is to it. One more thing. Notice that under the function buttons 7 and 8, you'll find the words insert and delete. In fact, sequencer menu page functions are highlighted in green under all the function buttons. The sequence mode is the ideal mode to use when using an external sequencer. Each song can serve as a multi timbral preset that sets up 16 programs with all the levels, pan settings, transpositions, and effect settings. Remember, there are 10 songs to work with, and each one can be a different multi timbral setup. There's an important function on page 8F in the sequencer edit mode. that sets up a song in the X3 sequencer to play general MIDI sequences or songs. Simply choose the desired song number, highlight OK, and say yes. Here's how to load an O3RW program card into the X3. I'll use the O3RW Dance PCM card set. Watch as I insert the program and PCM cards into their respective slots. Push each card all the way in until you hear it click. Press the global button, and then press function button 6. I recommend using the B-Bank for loading programs and combinations. Why? Because you can combine these new sounds with all the programs and combinations in the A-Bank. The reason for this is that the B-Bank cross-references its combinations. The display defaults to loading the C or card bank into bank A. Let's change A to B. Cursor right and say yes twice. The display will read completed. Let's press the program button and select bank B to hear our new sounds. How about B00 for some great new drum sounds? Here's B01 for a new slap bass. Check it out. Well, that's about it. I hope this video has been a help to you. One thing, don't let this video keep you from reading your owner's manual. With the basic understanding I hope you've gained from watching this tape, the manual should be a lot easier to understand. Also, don't forget Korg USA's excellent product support department. There are several well-trained experts waiting to assist you with your Korg products. Dial 1-516-333-USER and get direct access to Korg's product support center. Also, Freelance Goes to School has video owner's manuals available for the Korg M1, the O3RW, and the O1W series of workstations. These videos are available at your local Korg dealer. If you have one of these instruments, pick up your video today. Thanks for watching.